you all and many thanks for joining us on the business of sugar bean production webinar. My name is Rollings and I'm with Agri Business Media. And I'm standing in for our moderator who is not available today. We look forward to learning more on the technical and business aspects of sugar bean production. So just as a reminder that COVID-19 is real farmers, please mask up, sanitize and follow the lockdown regulations. If you want an exemption later, please get in touch with your district or provincial agritech office and we'll share their contacts as the webinar progresses. So how the webinar is going to unfold is we will have a series of presentations from different presenters that we've invited. Then we'll have a question and answer time after all the presentations. The presenters will be on standby for any questions. So if you have any question, please do post in the chat group. And also, you can also share your email addresses so that you will receive a link to, to the webinar recording. So farmers, farming is a business. Farming pays. And farming pays big time. So don't let anyone fool you. And I'm sure that's why we are all here. We believe farming is a business. But this cannot just happen. A lot of effort is required. And there are fundamentals such as farm business management that have to be true. So this webinar will help and assist with the information. Uh, we'll cover land preparation, we'll cover seed selection, planting, the keys to success, soil health, crop health, economic pro uh, economics of production, and also post-harvest management and the market. So it's an A to Z of the business of sugar bean production. And for sustainable farm business operations, we encourage diversification. That is running a number of integrated enterprises to spread risk and also to ensure regular income. So that each week or each month, you are making a sale. And that also improves your cash flows. So just a bit of background. What may interest you is that agribusiness media is the first free and largest digital platform for farmers. And we won the most innovative uh, award from the International Labor Organization 2020. So this webinar is run under online agribusiness TV, which is one of the agribusiness media wings. It promotes farm business video content and also visuals for learning purposes. So to view more of these recorded webinars and also more educative content, please visit uh, www.agribusiness.co.zw slash tv or our YouTube channel, Agribusiness TV ZW. We also just posted a link in the chat, uh, in the group chat for our social media platform. So you can just click and also uh, do please follow us or like us. So that's the first win. So the other wings, we I spoke about the Agribusiness TV. The other wings are our popular monthly agribusiness magazine, which is available for free. And um, you can download, you can read online from the website as well. So for the TV, it was agribusiness.co.zw, then slash TV. For the magazine, it's slash magazine. It's very interactive and informative. It covers both the technical and also business content so be sure to subscribe if you visit our website there's an option there where you can add your name uh, and your email address so you can receive the the magazine every month it's for free then uh, the third wing is the agribusiness directory which is over 3,000 searches every day you can also download it or view it online from our website so it's just a slash agribusiness slash uh, directory on, on the agribusiness uh, website. So the last one is agribusiness talk, which runs our social media uh, platforms. So on Facebook, it's agribusiness talk, and uh, that's Facebook slash agribusiness ZW. So also uh, posted the link in, in the chat group. And on Twitter, it's agribusiness media or agribusiness uh, ZW. So we're also on WhatsApp, 
we have over 540 WhatsApp groups. And if you want to join, we'll also share the, the links on uh, in the chat group. So we're going to have a very uh, detailed and informative discussion today. So feel free to ask questions. And uh, these questions, like I said before, will be addressed at the end of, uh, of the webinar. So I'm going to invite the presenters, uh, the presenters to introduce themselves and uh, the organizations they, they represent. So we'll start with, we'll start with um, Bradley from AHAST, then we'll have uh, Dimo Nutu from ZFC, we'll then have uh, w Manzura, Mazura, Wendy Mazura from Sidco, then Jay Manduna from AMA, then Mrs. Chikovu, that's Agribusiness and Markets Division under Agritex. Then we also have uh, Keith from Keynes. So maybe presenters, if you can introduce yourselves uh, in that order. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bradley Makoni. Uh, I'm an engineer and I'm with Hust Zimbabwe, your innovative engineering provider. And I'll be presenting on the mechanization of sugar bean production. Thank you. Greetings to you all. My name is Wendy Mazura. I'm the head of agronomy services at Sidco, and I'm honored to be part of this uh, sugar bean production uh, business talk. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Junia Manduna from the Agricultural Marketing Authority. I'm the interim head agribusiness department. I'll be presenting on uh, marketing of sugar beans in Zimbabwe. Good morning, everybody. My name is Shamiso Chikob from the Department of Agritech, the head for agribusiness and marketing section. I'm going to present on the economics of sugar bean production. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, there, Ms. Chikobu. Then we also have Keith from Keynes. Keith, are you on the call yet? Okay, maybe uh, he's not, uh, he hasn't joined us yet. So uh, we'll start off with uh, Shamiso Chekovu from uh, the Agribusiness and Markets Division. Uh, her presentation is on the economics of production. So you have uh, 15 minutes. Uh, Mrs. Chikobu. Good morning, everybody. My name is Shamiso Chikobu from the Department of Agritics. I'm going to present to you on the economics of sugar bean production. Okay, before I talk about the economics of sugar bean production, I think we all know we are talking about farming as a business. Farming is a business. In the end, all of us, we need to treat it as one. As, the, as all other business, like those that are in aircraft engineering, those that are in manufacturing, they do their programs as business. So in agriculture, we also need to treat it as a business. One other important thing that we need to take into consideration is we need to record all our operations as soon as they are done and regularly analyze them and put our plans into action. Farmers should keep different records and this should inform them in their future planning. And in agriculture, the first step that we do is planning. And we need to plan well in advance. We plan on what we want to do, when we want to do it, and how we want to do it. And what are the resources that we need? And where are we going to get the resources that we need? Not to wait for government to give us the resources to do all our operations. We should plan in advance, look for resources, and then get our inputs that we need for all our operations. Also, in agriculture, we need to set our targets. We need to produce a cropping program that determines the inputs and the equipment requirements. And then we plan accordingly to, to meet the set targets. We also need to produce a budget which determines our financial needs. And we then explore the best or the least. You, you explore the best or you look for the best paying enterprise out. You look for the best paying enterprise. And also, as agriculture, we need to do our operations timely. I think that's the challenge that we are facing right now. Farmers, they wait for inputs from government, and these inputs come very late, and then they plant late. You know, 
with different crop, the, the different utilities that they need, for example, maize. If you plant maize in Japan, definitely you will not yield equally like a person who planted in October or November. And businesses continuously check what happens within and outside the business. We need to identify the strengths, the weaknesses, and the opportunities and threats. And we should also look at the opportunities that exist and work on them. We capitalize on them and work around the threats so that we may be able to move. Like I said, we should be alert of the opportunity that exists. Businesses also always seek to isolate and the development which produce which provide business opportunities and exploit this. And another thing of concern, ourselves are, no, are now not in their good conditions. Farmers are encouraged to take regular their soil samples and test for pH so that they can apply fertilizers accordingly to the crop requirements. And also in terms of production, we need we need to produce according to this according to the requirements of the market. And also as farmers, we need to supervise all our operations. The challenge that we are having with cell phone farmers, they do not supervise operations and and eventually their productivity is very low because some of the inputs are abused in the process because they do not supervise and monitor all the operations. And now looking at the we are going to use what to call a gross match used in selecting the best enterprise. And now looking at sugar bean, I hope you are seeing the figures that we have here. Uh, this is a gross margin, but it allows us to do an economic analysis. Sorry, an economic analysis. Here we can see the different inputs that are needed in the production of sugar beans. We need the seed, and our seeding rate is about 100 kgs per hectare. And we also need the basal fertilizer and the top dressing fertilizers. We also need the herbicides. We also need the insecticides. And then we also need labor. Our challenge with the, our farmers currently, especially the communal farmers, they do not cost their labor that they provide in the production enterprise. As such, they are, when they look at their budgets, it does not reflect the cost of the labor. And for sugar bean, we need about 80 labor days. And also there's the cost of land preparation. And if we look at this budget, the total cost of producing per hectare of sugar beans is about 1000 that is about $990.33. This is US dollars. And uh, for our yield levels, usually our expected yield, yield it ranges between 1 to 2.5 tons per hectare. And the expected price, current prices are ranging from 1300 per ton, depending on your location. And so the gross income will be 2,600, and our gross margin will be $1,609.68. And the return per dollar invested is $1.63. So it means in sugar bean production, every dollar you invest, you will get $1.63 in return. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, great. Uh, many thanks for, for that uh, presentation. Uh, it's, a, it's an eye-opener and uh, it, it, it really shows how lucrative the, the, the business of sugar bean uh, production uh, is. So we'll now move on to our next presenter uh, from uh, East Zimbabwe to cover on, on land preparation. Thank you. Right. Um, good morning once again. 
Um, I will be presenting on the mechanization of sugar bean production, and I will go right into it uh, to say what are the benefits of mechanizing your production process. Uh, number one, we have uh, increased capacity utilization, that is uh, increased ability to use the land that you have. Uh, with limited labor uh, resources available, uh, mechanizing your operation improves your ability to use your land. Then there's reduced drudgery. Um, drudgery is basically the, la the laboriousness of uh, an operation. Uh, so basically reduce drudgery, improvement of management is um, in terms of um, if you have less requirement of labor to go through your processes, uh, you have more people available to then manage the, co the core of the business so that uh, you are always on target. Uh, then you have increased ability to meet targets when you have uh, high hectare. Uh, you can meet your targets because once you mechanize, you improve your, your work rates. And from there, uh, the first uh, piece of mechanization that I'm going to talk about is uh, what we refer to as our, a tractor. A tractor is basically a vehicle designed and intended for drawing, pushing or pulling uh, something that cannot propel itself. And uh, a P, uh, through its PTO, a tractor can also power a wide variety of machinery and implements. Um, when you're looking at your tractor, um, most tractors will come in with what we refer to as a stick sheet. And uh, the one that I have here is for a New Holland tractor. And I've highlighted in green there three items that, uh, that I believe are of key interest to, to, to the farmer. Number one is the amount of horsepower available from your tractor. Number two is uh, the maximum lift capacity of your tractor, that is the lift capacity at, at the eyes of your tractor. And then uh, after that we also have at the bottom there uh, the weight of your tractor, the weight of your tractor without added weights. The weight of your tractor also influences the, your, your ability to, to draw um, implements behind it. Next, we go to implement power specifications, that is horsepower ratings given, uh, which will vary, vary based on uh, the following parameters. Uh, soil type, uh, low, you need lower horsepower for sandy soils and higher horsepower for heavy clay soils. And uh, when you are sizing your tractor uh, or matching your tractor with your implements, you are recommended to take closer to the higher horsepower rating uh, for the avoidance of doubt and also you need to also take uh, into into serious consideration the lifting capacity uh, as compared to the weight of the implements that you're going to be purchasing so the first implement that i'm going to talk about i'll just go to the next slide is what we know as uh, reaper. reapers or subsoilers and are uh, used for breaking plow pens which improves so uh, catena aerations brings up subsoil clays and uh, improves root penetration and water penetration. Uh, going back to the previous slide there, uh, what are plow pans? Plow pans are developed over years and uh, they're caused by either traffic compaction, that is the weight of your tractor or the weight of your cattle that are walking over your land and the weight of people and so on that, that uh, cause what is uh, referred to as traffic compaction. There's also what is referred to as uh, plastering compaction, and this results from uh, uh, the, the plastering effect of, uh, of your plowed disc as it rubs against the, the, the layer that it doesn't turn over. And uh, so your reaper is meant to break plow pens. If you look at the root, uh, uh, the roots of the, of the tubers that we have on the right there, you notice that uh, the one to the far, the far left is straight, which is almost what it's supposed to be. But as you go towards the right, depending on the depth of your plow pen, you, you, you start to have uh, root bending and so on. So this, the, so this is the effect, uh, this is one of the effects rather of uh, having a plow pen under your soil. Uh, over and above uh, this, you also have, uh, if you look at the, uh, the picture to the bottom left there, you notice that from that point to somewhere around where my mouse button is there, we have moisture 
having percolated, but below that, you notice that water has not gone down further. This reduces the amount of water available to your plant and also uh, has the tendency of increasing uh, the water logging of your field and uh, also the runoff that results from that. Um, going from there, we, we also have what we refer to as the Bartolo plow. Uh, Bartolo plow is a reaper, but uh, in, uh, in this case is used uh, when, you're, when you intend on running uh, conservation tillage. So what it does is it breaks the soil pan and loosens soil, but it, it has very minimal overturning of the soil because it uses slant tines. And uh, so for those who are into zero till, or so rather not zero till, but minimum tillage, this is a, a piece of equipment that would be of benefit to you. At the same time that uh, the farmer does um, reaping, you will also want to apply fertilizer uh, or rather lime. So this is what we refer to as either a fertilizer distributor or a lime box. It's meant for application of lime or gypsum for correcting soil pH, which then enhances nutrient absorption. And uh, it can also be used for, for broadcast planting for other crops, but uh, for, for the purpose of sugar, for the purpose of sugar beans, you just want to ensure that your pH is corrected and this is done through the use of um, a, a lime spreader. We move on to the, the, our next operation. Um, if you are into, if you are, if if you are engaged in um, in conventional farming, the next piece of equipment that you will need is, uh, is what we know as a disc plow. Or at times, some use moldboard plows, but I've, I noticed they're not very common in Zimbabwe. Uh, so, to the top right, we have a reversible plow, um, and to the bottom left, we have um, a fixed beam plow. A reversible plow ensures that you can you can uh, you, you you reduce on turnaround time because you can you can go up a furrow and come back down the same furrow so that you you waste less time going around it improves your fuel consumption uh, the fixed beam plow has an increased uh, fuel consumption but it also then now comes in with the benefits of less or rather a reduced number of wear parts and a reduced number of replaceable parts For those who are into uh, uh, what you call it small-scale farming, we also have ox-drawn plows, which serve basically the same purpose, that is inversion of soil, uh, burial of, um, of, uh, of crop residue or weeds, and uh, ensuring that your, your field is uh, in the right condition for planting. After, uh, after plowing, your next operation will be harrowing because you you want to improve the soil tilt soil tilt uh, uh, first of all first and foremost uh, to improve so, uh, seed to soil contact uh, next to level the seed bed and uh, disking cutting up of uh, stover to reduce clogging of the planter and uh, so harrows are either drawn uh, and transported hydraulically if you see the, the harrow that we have here it's on wheels so it, it's a heavy duty uh, harrow it relies on self-weight to achieve uh, depth and uh, then we also have a mounted harrow which is much lighter uh, for the smaller farmers who are still entry level into tractor drone uh, equipment this will this will be the implement of choice then those who use ox drone, uh, we have what we know as the triangular or spike tooth harrow, and uh, basically it does all these do the uh, the same operation. So the the benefits of of harrow of harrowing is once you've leveled your soil, you ensure that your planting depth is even because as your planter goes through the field, if the if the if the land is not level, there's a tendency to have uh, places that are higher getting uh, seed uh, planted deeper and pl places that are in sort of troughs getting uh, seed planted shallow and then you have uh, a, a difference in germination dates and so on. After you're done leveling your soil, you then bring in uh, 
pieces of equipment that we have on that we have here uh, number one is depending on your on, on on the practice that you're going to use for the planting of your of your sugar beans you're either going to place uh, one or two rows on a bed so we have uh, an implement known as a bed maker which uh, uh, comes up with the bed and number two which also levels the bed we, have, we also have an implement known as a re reager which does basically almost the same uh, process as uh, our bed maker there then we also have a reager in, in the event that you decide that you, uh, because of the nature of your land you want to, pr to plant your your beans on ridges why use ridges or beds uh, to ensure that you have optimum drainage of your field number one to ensure that you also reduce the amount of runoff that you that you have in your field For those who use ox drone uh, or rather who are not yet able to, to purchase equipment for uh, for uh, that is tractor drone we also have what we know as the ox drone region which can, which is basically the same as uh, the tractor drone uh, uh, signal. After you're done creating your, your beds at all, you, the next process we go into is uh, planting. And uh, for planting, we have two types, two main categories of planter that we have for, and the first one to the left is the mechanical planter, and the one to the right is pneumatic planter. Um, the benefits of going mechanical planter are they are low, uh, they are lower maintenance, they are much easier to maintain, and they require a lower skill level in terms of maintenance. However, they also have the increased incidence of uh, seed damage because of the, 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 the manner in which the mechanical plates uh, operate. To the right, we have pneumatic planters. The pneumatic planters have uh, much higher um, uh, percentages of uh, germination to do because you have uh, almost zero percent seed damage and uh, also um, the, 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 the mechanism with which seed is picked is very precise. However, there's a problem if you are planting seed that is not clean. Uh, clean seed is uh, not recommended, sorry, unclean seed is not recommended for uh, pneumatic planters because the, the, the small holes that, on, that, that the pneumatic planter uses for picking up seed will then get blocked with stover and you end up planting stover instead of planting your seed. After you, you put your crop into the ground, your next operation is going to be cultivation. And uh, why cultivate? You want to loosen your soil a, a little bit for aeration in standing crops. You also want to remove weeds from standing crops. Uh, cultivators are also available as ox drone for the same purpose. As your crop is standing, you then also have the emergence of pests, and also at times you want to apply uh, herbicides, and uh, you can do this through the use of uh, a boom sprayer. For those who, who are experimental and want to use uh, foliar fertilizers, a boom sprayer can also be used for the same purpose. Then for those of us who are still in very small scale operations, uh, you can use, you can substitute your boom sprayer with a knapsack sprayer. After you're done with your cropping cycle, uh, the next operation is obviously harvesting and uh, case we then we then recommend uh, harvesting if your acreage uh, is uh, relatively big uh, use of a combine harvester and it's so named because the machine combines operations of harvesting threshing winnowing and seeding grains we also have what we know as shellers so depending on the make of your sheller uh, it has a sheller that can be used that, that we refer to as an all crop thresher. This uh, machine can shell all grains apart from finger millet and millet. All the relatively larger grains can be shelled using the all crop thresher that includes um, sugar beans. 
once you're done with your harvesting, you will require transport solutions from the field. Also, even before you got, get to the point of, um, of harvesting, during your, 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 your processes, you want to transport goods and produce around the farm, whether it be fertilizer from, 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 the, from, the, from the home to the field. Good, and, good. And like, uh, oh. So we use what we know as uh, our farm trailers. For those who, are, who have uh, smaller operations, you, you can then substitute the farm trailer through the use of uh, what we know as scotch cuts. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Bay, uh, Bradley, for the, for the great presentation. And it is true that some of our farmers are having the lowest earnings per capita, mainly because of low yield per hectare. And um, mechanization, surely, it's one of the important means uh, of increasing uh, yield per hectare. So thank you very much for, for that great uh, presentation. And uh, we like especially the, the approach, the step-by-step -step, uh, approach to it. We appreciate. Uh, thank you. So the next presentation is coming from Dim Unutu from uh, ZFC. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself um, before you go um you go for it so you have uh, 20 minutes demo note to zfc is going to cover on soil health and also crop health uh <coughs> thank you so much my name is adidai caleb Monotu from uh, zfc limited uh i shall be touching on the nutritional and uh, crop protection aspect of uh, sugar bean production can you see my presentation now sure sure that's good. All right. So to start off, uh, basically what we require as farmers, we should be able to, whenever we make a decision to put in any crop, is to make sure that we have a sound, sound background and sound knowledge of what the, of the status of our soils. Uh, so in that case, we, we are simply referring to soil sampling and soil analysis issues. So. For, for basically, for, for every farmer, it is, it is just a test that is important to determine the fertility and nutrient levels uh, in any given soil. You realize that uh, we've been tilling our land uh, for years now, and very few of us have been able to come in with uh, uh, soil amendments so that we make sure that the soil is within uh, the, the, the required pH ranges for optimum plant growth. So soil sampling, soil sampling is key. It is the first thing that we should uh, carry out. You also realize that uh, once you do your soil sampling, you tend to get your increased yields. That means you improve on your value. And another important aspect for most of our farmers is to reduce production costs and maximize yields. So this will then give you a hint or the, a, a, the true picture of, how, of what's, con what's contained in your cells. So uh, these days we're talking of precision farming where we want to apply uh, the right food nutrients at the right food time, right placement. So that will then minimize on, on the impact of, of, of uh, uh, environmental degradation. You realize that some of the fertilizers and manures, they eventually they get leached out of the soil and driven, uh, driven into water bodies, which we then want to try as much as possible to minimize. So once you apply, the correct fertilizers at the right time, uptake of those nutrients will be maximum. So how, how does one come up with a, a one collect a soil, a soil sample from their fields? We have got different sampling methods. Those are as enlightened in, in, in that picture. Those are the different sampling methods. But what is important is that for, for a farmer, you need to get to a depth of 20 to 30 centimeters because for most of our crops, uh, that is where the, the root zone is mostly confined. So once you take your samples, a minimum of 10 sub samples, you mix them together thoroughly and then come up with one composite sample, probably that can weigh uh, between 500 grams to a kg. That is the, 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 the weight of soils uh, that you can then take uh, to a lab uh, in, for, for, for analysis. When it's taken to, to the lab for analysis, 
uh, the whole idea is to have an appreciation of what uh, nutrient levels are there in the soil. First of all, we look at the major, major, major elements or the major nutrients, that is your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. This is what basically is required for, 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 for plant growth, the major demands of your plant growth. But we also have other aids, uh, like your secondary elements, your calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. Then your trace elements, that is your zinc, boron, uh, molybdenum, etc., etc. So these are important for us to, to, to appreciate. Those trace elements, they are required in very minute quantities. Uh, e, some farmers may not really appreciate uh, why exactly we want to, 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 why exactly there is need to put the trace elements or to apply them to particular crops. It is because we want to address what we call hidden hunger. In this case, we want to address issues to do uh, with the very small uh, elements that support metabolic processes. Say, for example, the trace element called zinc is required uh, during photosynthesis, uh, during photoreactions. So if it is not supplied, it means that our photosynthetic processes will not, smooth, will not uh, uh, flow smoothly. Hence, when you supply those elements, you tend to get a yield advantage over somebody who has not applied those elements. So this is the important the importance of those stress elements. Having analyzed your soils, you then have your, your 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 soil amendment products being recommended to you. So, for example, we have got a calcitic lime and your dolomitic lime. These are meant to neutralize uh, the soil uh, from 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 the more acidic side to a range that is more optimal. In this case. You, you, you realize that for most crops, uh, they do grow well from a pH range of uh, 5.5 to 6.5. But uh, for, 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 for uh, sugar beans, we can talk of 5.6 to 6.3. That is the optimum pH range for your sugar beans. But you can also realize that when you have analyzed your cells, the, the soil can be alkaline. But you now want to try and condition it to bring down the alkaline soil to, to a range that is optimum and even to reclaim some of the sodic soils. In that case, you then uh, get a recommendation to use your gypsum or what we call calcium sulfate. It is one and the same thing. So it has those benefits. It improves the soil texture and um, it then reduces the alkalinity, the level of alkalinity of your soil. So going on to the nutrition side, um, sugar beans are not very much of heavy feeders uh, compared to some other crops. You realize that it is your basal dressing. You require uh, your compound D or what you call maize fat. That is the usual formulation of 7, 14, 7. You require about 250 to 300 kgs per hectare. This is a generic recommendation, but after having analyzed your cells, you realize you get some specific uh, recommendations as to the quantum of nutrients that you should apply onto the feed per hectare. Then you can also use your cereal bin. These are high analysis fertilizers. Uh, that is your 1428, 14, 14 or 623, 23. The application rate ranges from 100 to 150 kgs. Uh, it is important to take note that these are basal fertilizers which should be applied at or before planting. So, Tarambati uh, Kiyagu Zizama basal fertilizers from Soro. It is important that we put them within the root zone because your phosphorus and your potassium are not mobile or they rather they are slowly immobile. They are, they are slowly mobile. So for them to move from the top of the roots down to, to, to the root zone, it will take a while. Only nitrogen from these fertilizers will go downwards. So after having applied your, your basal fertilizers, the crop is growing, you then need to come in with your ammonium nitrate. You realize ammonium nitrate is just about uh, 150 to 200 kgs Per hectare that you then apply at week number three or week number four after crop emergence. Uh, this will satisfy your nitrogen requirement. But in any case, you can also apply or seed dress your uh, or seed dress with uh, rhizobium, which is simply a bacteria which fixes, fixes the nitrogen from the atmosphere into the root zone of your crop. So this would then substitute the application of, of ammonium nitrate. 
but having applied the rhizobium and then you realize that your pods are not nodulating well or that the color of your nodules, you can simply open uh, your nodules, pull out a few plants, open uh, the nodules of your crop, check the color of those uh, nodules. If they are not, uh, they do not have a, a, a deep purple color, it means that the, the rhizobium is not working well and you may need to come in with your with your top dressing fertilizer, ammonium nitrate. But if it is working well, uh, you have that uh, deep, deep uh, purple color, it will mean that you do not necessarily need to apply the ammonium nitrate. But how then do you enhance the quality of your crop to uh, supply the trace, millions, the trace elements that I've mentioned earlier? You come in with your, special, with your foliar fertilizers. Uh, in this case, we recommend that you apply your foliar 15 the application, you need uh, just about a liter for, for hectare. You apply this every two weeks, you realize that the quality of your crop improves, uh, the quality of your pods and even the flowers themselves will definitely improve because of the nutrients that you get from the trace, uh, from, from the foliar 15. Foliar 15 is simply a, a, a foliar fertilizer that is packed with uh, the major and trace elements uh, that we said are required for crop growth. But it is also important for, for, for farmers now to look into the aspects of uh, uh, weed control and weed management. Basically, these days we are promoting uh, the use of uh, herbicides uh, so that we have minimum effort in the fields. What, well, what, what benefits then do you get from, uh, from these herbicides? to do with labor, you tend to have a few, a few people that you require or to pay off, unlike coming in with your manual, your manual weight control. Uh, it's pretty major. Yeah, besides, we recommend that you use uh, the herbicides enlisted. Uh, your battery gold is a combination of s and flumetulam. Application rate range is 0 0.7 to 1.7 liters per hectare, but it, it differs uh, with uh, the soil type that you've got, you realize that you apply less in your sand soils and a bit more in heavier or in clay soils. But this, one, this product controls your annual grasses and broad leaf weeds. You also have your dual magnum, which is simply your s metallaglo which does deal with your yellow nutrients, broad leaf weeds, and uh, grasses. Then Frontier Optima is also a good product, particularly for those farmers that have got challenges with the one that do as well as uh, some annual and broad leaf weeds. So these are your pre emergency herbicides. You apply them after planting before the crop has emerged. It is, it is important for farmers to apply the herbicides when there is moisture on the soil. Moisture is required for activating the herbicides and you have a good uh, clean field after application. Then for the post emergency herbicides, generally you realize that uh, We've got two products, your fluas for pea butyl. It deals with your annual and perennial grasses. Uh, you will notice that the application rate, it, it, it's quite range. It's from one to eight liters per hectare. Um, the reason for this is that the application rate differs with uh, the size of the weeds. Uh, for smaller weeds that are coming out, uh, you would recommend you apply your one or two liters per hectare. What we recommend is to, for farmers to come in uh, with their post emergency herbicides at three to five leaf stage before the weeds have overgrown. E, most farmers then want to come in with a, with a later application of pesticides of a herbicides, and then you realize that the efficacy of the herbicides sometimes will be compromised and do not really get some good control. So it is important to come in with your with your herbicides, your post emergency herbicides before the weeds take up nutrients, take up moisture, and even compete with your crop for other resources that are required for growth. And when we just when the weeds are small, that's the best time to hit them, knock them out, and have your, 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 clean, your clean field. Basagran, it's a fantastic product. It then uh, suppresses your yellow nut sage and controls broad leaf weeds. This is a contact herbicide. So we recommend that you do full cover spray so that uh, the broad leaf weeds and the nutsedge are well taken care of, they are well covered with the chemical and that you then have uh, uh, adequate or optimal control. 
looking at uh, uh, the insecticide, we have got various pests that interfere with their sugar beans as they, as they grow. Uh, with aphids, you can, with aphids when they kill, uh, you can use your diamethyl 40, 40 EC, the malathion, your apron star. Apron star is a seed dresser that you then apply it uh, at planting. You require about 10 grams. Once I can, we then do four kgs of seed. So it is important for farmers then to come in with a, the rightful uh, product and the rightful time. But uh, you also notice that when the crop is, is emerged, it is now growing, cutworms tend to come in. That's when you require to use either lambda cyhalothrin or your fenvirelate. These are products that can control your cutworms. And additionally, you can do, you can use your clopidifos uh, 48 EC. When the crop is emerged, it is growing. There is a tendency, the biggest uh, pest that I've realized in this country or in most countries, it's uh, the bean stem maggot. But for you to be able to adequately control it, you need to use an insecticide called diazinon. It is applied four times per, per, per season. At day number three, 13 and 20, after your crop is made. Once you have uh, applied that product, it means you have well taken care of at the bean stem maggot. But when the pods have now formed and uh, the, the flowers are developing well, there is a tendency of having some um, lepidopteran pests, that is your Heliotis boweum and your lesser armyworm. In this case, we recommend that you can use a spike extra, which is just a combination of your imamectin benzoate plus acetamiprid. It is a new product from ZFC, which does control this lepidopteran pest. It's a fantastic one we should try out. You can also use your, 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 your thunder uh, as well as carbon 85 wettable powder. But when so sometimes you also realize that uh, red spider mites do come in, and in that case, you can use them, you, you can make a control uh, from a uh, diamethoid uh, 40 EC as well as a diacophor. What's important uh, for farm farmers is to make a rotation of chemicals in any operation that you do. You then need to interact with the agronomist so that you are given chemicals of different modes of action. This will then help you to minimize uh, insect resistance, uh, or let's say, let's just call it pest resistance, because with any, with any pesticide that you use, you need to use different modes of action uh, each time you apply in a season. And you also need to take note of the maximum number of sprays that you can apply for with, with each, with each, with each uh, pesticide, be it an insecticide, a herbicide, or a fungicide. Uh, we also have some fungal diseases that then interact, inter interfere with the growth of, your, uh, of, our, of our sugar beans. The first one is called uh, bacterial blight. You can deal with it using uh, copper oxychloride, basically your 10 to 14 days intervals to deal with rust. You can, you can come in with your diamethoid, uh, 45, uh, M, M, M45, sorry about that, not diamethoid. Diamethoid is an insecticide. Your, for, for us to deal with diethin M45, some know it is mancocept. You can also come in with your shavit as well as your tebriconazone. But again, to address uh, your soy bone fungi as well as uh, uh, elysis and pests, we recommend that you use apron star which I mentioned that it is a seed dresser applied uh, at, 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 at planting that will give you uh, protection against your illnesses and pests for about six to, to, to eight weeks after, after the crop is emerged. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Well, many thanks for, for the great uh, presentation there. Uh, you really covered the uh, crucial aspects of uh, the soil and also uh, crop health. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Munutu uh, from ZFC. Now um, we invite Wendy Mazura from Seedco. She's going to cover on the seed selection, uh, planting, and also uh, the production uh, tips or key success factors. Uh, Wendy, uh, it's your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. 
Uh, may you kindly share my presentation? Oh yes, uh, sure, just hold on. While we wait for the presentation to show, I'll just introduce myself again. My name is Wendy Mazura. I'm the head of agronomy services for Sitco Zimbabwe. And my task today is to present on the factors to consider during seed selection. I'll just start to like to start by applauding agribusiness talk for assembling uh, a team of experts in the different fields which is going to add value in the in this presentation for you farmers as you make your cropping decisions. So to begin with, it's important for us to consider why we are growing any crop before we venture into crop production. We are now on the second slide. So in sugar bean production, why is it that sugar bean is a crop to consider? Sugar bean is a crop to consider because of its many benefits. As listed there are some of the benefits. Valuable source, it's a valuable source of protein where the protein content can range between 15 to 25%, give or take, depending on the variety that will have been established. It also has the ability to enhance the soil fertility through nitrogen fixation, particularly if incorporation of the crop residue and the root that is also done after harvesting. It's also a valuable cash crop with a wide market base where you can sell it to the processing companies. You can also sell it to institutions. You can sell it well on the open market. It's one of the crops that is easy to sell depending on the time at which you will have produced it. So it's also important for you to take note of when you're going to grow it because it is two windows, except for the low veld where it can be grown throughout the year. It's also a good rotation crop because it enables the breaking of pest life cycles. It being in the leguminous family, if you're going to rotate it with a crop in the cereal family, it means that the diseases, the insect pests that we're going to hamper production in one of those crops is not going to hamper production in the next. So it's, uh, it's important for you to consider leguminous crops like your sugar bean when you are doing crop rotation. Another important benefit of growing sugar bean is that it's a relatively uh, early maturing crop, as you will see when we highlight some of the varieties that are available on the market. So it enables you to come in with quick rotations and turnover of your crop which enables you to maximize on productivity and profitability. Next slide, please. So now we just want to look at the sugar bean profit story. It's important when you are establishing any crop to look at the profitability because we always reiterate the fact that farming is a business and indeed it is. So your yield obtained for sugar bean, if you're going to push your yield levels for any crop, imagine a farmer who is going to get 0.5 tons per hectare. This is a farmer who is going to get 1.5 tons and another farmer 2.5, another 3 tons. Obviously, the profitability is going to be highest for the farmer who will have obtained the highest uh, yield per ton, uh, the, the highest yield per hectare while we are maintaining the same variable cost. So the variable cost can range between, uh, nowadays it can range from even 700, 900 to 1,000, depending on the cost structure and the things that you're going to be purchasing uh, based on soil analysis, based on the weed spectrum, based on the insect pest problems that you anticipate and the problematic diseases. You also are going to see that uh, sugar bean is also quite profitable because the profit margins can range between a thousand. Uh, it can go even as high as 1.4, 1.5, giving you returns per dollar invested of between 2.5 to around $3, 3.5, give or take, depending on the market that you eventually sell to. So the break-even yield is usually between 0 0.8 to 1 ton per hectare. So this is always important for you to do for any crop so that you know whether or not you risk getting a profit or you are running at a loss. Next slide, please. So the next slide just highlights the essential elements for crop production. The essential elements fit together 
to bring to bring about uh, increased productivity where today we were fortunate enough to have different speaker, speakers who were highlighting on the importance of the soil the importance of management and also it also looks at the weather elements where we are looking at the ideal time to plant if it's a 100 percent dryland crop the ideal time to plant in line with the um, the seasonal forecast when we are going to be having rain for that allows for us to plant sugar bean without the risk of the crop uh, incurring losses at germination. Today I'm going to be highlighting, as you have already seen, the genetics, the importance of the genetics. Next slide, please. So genetics or the genome, it speaks to the seed selection factors. When we are looking at issues to do with the yield potential to begin with, because farming is a business. So the higher the yield, the higher return on investment. So you also need to factor in the yield potential of the variety that you're going to select. You also need to look at issues to do with the market preference. On the market, there's a wide range of uh, sugar bean varieties, but you also need to make sure that before you establish the varieties, you have a market that is ready to take it up. Say, for example, you establish Michigan pea bean, which is supposed to be a canning bean and is supposed to be sold at a specific market, and you establish a vast land of it at the end of the day only to sell it to, uh, to the open market, like uh, to places like Mbari. It means the return per dollar that you're supposed to get is going to be low. In some incidences, you might even fail to sell it because the end user might not understand its main use. So you need to make sure that you understand the market preference. Does it want the red speckled bean varieties? Does it want the navy bean varieties, the white, the butter beans? So you also need to make sure that you, you consider that. The growth habit is another uh, key attribute which, which you should look at where we are looking at uh, the issues to do with the variety being either determinate or indeterminate. Indeterminate varieties in nature, these varieties have the ability to continue uh, to um, growing vegetatively even if flowering is started, adding a few more leaves even after flowering. This is uh, one of the attributes that is good in line with uh, issues to do with climate change and, uh, and uh, climate um, variations that can occur during the cropping cycle, where sometimes the crop may be affected at a um, key stage of growth. It will be of major benefit to have an indeterminate variety, which has the ability to add a few more leaves, a few uh, even if flowering has started. The determinate varieties are also good in the sense that once flowering starts, they channel all their nutrients to the reproductive uh, parts where there's no more vegetative growth that's going to occur. In most cases, the determinate varieties tend to mature much earlier than the indeterminate varieties. So it speaks to the time in which you, you wish to harvest your crop. The soil and climatic conditions, as highlighted by the previous speakers, uh, the soil is important. Taking care of the soil as the main growing media is also quite important. Uh, sugar bean is sensitive to acidity, so you need to take note of that. And your variety choice, if there are varieties on the market that are more tolerant to acidic soils, that uh, would help in your selection. And also you find that uh, issues to do with um, clay content come into play where sugar bean prefers clay, a, clay, a clay content that is above 15 percent as opposed to sandier soils. Disease tolerance and resistance is one of the key things that you should look at when you are selecting varieties because it speaks to um, the issues to do with uh, you having to spend less in terms of disease control, in, the, in terms of um, uh, the control of problematic diseases, in particular in sugar bean production. And your rotation plan, which also feeds into the growth habits where you're going to grow either a determinate or indeterminate varieties in line with um, with your, your rotation plan and your cropping program. You should always select high quality certified seed so that you can guarantee, you can have the guarantee of having high yields and a higher return per dollar invested as we have highlighted that farming is indeed a business. So the types of bean varieties on the market on the next slide, Just to highlight a few, the most common and most preferred variety of beans is the red speckled bean variety. 
And uh, we also have the white broad bean varieties and the Michigan pea bean varieties that are available on the market. So these are just some examples of the bean varieties that are there. The list is not exhaustive because we have over 20 different types of, uh, of bean varieties that you can opt for. The important thing is market analysis because you do not want to grow something that you end up feeding to your chickens or feeding to to se selling at a very, very low low price because you don't have uh, the desired market for it or it's for a niche market. Next slide, please. So the next slide is where we are going to spend most of our time, where we are going to be talking about the, the sugar bean varieties that are available on the market. So the varieties that are available on the market and the attributes. SC Bounty and SC Sharp are some of the varieties that have been grown extensively on the market. And they've been grown because of their high performance, their high disease tolerance, especially to problematic diseases that have been highlighted by, by our previous speaker, which are the sugar bean rust. You find that there are some leaf spots, angular leaf spots that can be problematic as well. So these varieties are quite tolerant, which means there is a saving implication um, uh, to, your, to, to the cost of spraying products that would come in to control these diseases if this uh, if you're going to select varieties that are more tolerant to these problematic diseases. SC Bounty and SC Sharp will mature between 90 to 115 days and uh, the yield potential will be between two to two and a half tons per hectare. You should always remember that days to maturity are given in a range format so that you can be managed to fit in the agroecological region that you are in because the agroecological region will speak to the heat units that you're going to get in the altitude so it also then speaks to the days to maturity that you're going to get where in a higher altitude you are going to expect uh, uh, to get uh, a, a prolonged period to maturity as opposed to uh, lower altitudes where it's warmer like your lower belt which is why they are able to even grow sugar beans throughout the year, even during the winter period, because they experience higher yield heat units even through uh, the winter months. SC Gadra is one of our new flagships on the market, a variety that can mature within, in some areas, um, it can take even 65 days, 70 days, but on average, we are working with between uh, 75 to 80, 85 days to maturity. It has a yield potential of two and a half tons per hectare. It's a red speckled uh, bean variety. Then SC Ukulinga, it matures within about 80 to 90 days, and uh, the yield potential is up to three tons per hectare, with testimonies of farmers who managed to establish it last season, hitting the three ton mark, which is to say, the return per dollar invested there will be quite high, considering that uh, the the cost structure is at around 800 to 1,000. Then the other variety um, is um, Calidon. Calidon, uh, please kindly note that it's not Cardinal Day, it's Calidon. Calidon is a navy bean variety, which is specifically recommended for canning. So this is one of the varieties that we were speaking about when we were saying, if you're going to grow it and you are not under contract and you don't know where to sell this particular variety, you might be found in a fix when at the end of the season you don't have any way to sell it. So you need to choose wisely your varieties. The market is a wide range of uh, variety options, but you just need to be guided by the, the market preference. The next slide, please. So having highlighted uh, the, the sugar bean varieties that we have on the market, it's important for you to also note that, ah, sorry, I had forgotten to mention the variety bonus. Bonus okay. is a variety that most farmers have grown extensively, and uh, it's, a, it's a top performer, consistent performer, oh. elastic across environments, and it will give you good yields. So currently, we were selling SC Bounty, we had Gadra, we, have, we had Ukulinga as well, uh, but we're expecting that some of these varieties will also... Um, We'll be getting them as the the, the 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 sugar bean season progresses because they had sold out. But we have SC bounty in stock. We have SC bonus in stock. So you can get these varieties, especially from uh, our Stapleford offices, or if you engage our agronomists who are scattered across the country, you can uh, go out to our website for more information on where you can find these varieties 
and uh, the cost that is associated with buying these varieties. So the crop selection, there are a thousand reasons for low yields, so many that we cannot list them and uh, to exhaustion in one presentation, but there are only two reasons for better and higher yields. It's using seed co seed varieties and adopting good agronomic practices. So there we're just trying to highlight some of the other crop varieties that we have on the market where maize is our flagship being the staple crop for our country. We also do soya, we have wheat. Some farmers, you know, uh, planning on time is what we advocate for because failing to plan uh, equates to planning to fail. So some farmers are already thinking about their wheat crop, which is why we are saying, if you failed to establish maybe your maize, your soya bean crop on time, this is the time for you to be considering sugar bean production if you want to come in with, uh, with, with a wheat crop on time. So you also need to know that uh, Sitco has good varieties for wheat. We also have small grain or, or traditional grain varieties depending on, uh, um, uh, on, on, on your preference. We also have the sugar bean that we were talking about. Then we have an, an, a, a wide range of horticulture crops where we have brassicas, we have uh, the solanaceous, in the solanaceous family, we have your tomato, the eggplant, we also have um, a wide range of the cucumber family as well. The, the list for the horticultural crops is exhaustive, uh, but it's quite broad. We have a, a, a very, very wide range. Uh, if you think of any vegetable crop, we are most likely to have it. So we just thought we'd highlight that as you go on with the cropping enterprises. Next slide, please. So on crop and variety selection, it's important for you to take note of the following tips. If you're going to be doing a 100% uh, rain-fed crop, next slide. If you're going to be doing a 100% uh, uh, rain-fed crop, you need to select high-yielding varieties with defensive agronomic traits that are adopted to the climatic, which is the abiotic uh, conditions that you're going to be facing and the biotic uh, conditions that you're going to be facing. Uh, please move back to slide number nine. So the amount and distribution of rainfall is important because it speaks to the length of the uh, and the uh, the length of the season that you have to grow that particular crop, especially if it's 100% rain fed. And it also speaks to the altitude and the temperature that you're going to be getting. Where now the question on most farmers' minds is: uh, If I establish a particular crop. We need to make it to maturity even if I irrigate, but there are more factors than just irrigation that come into play. The issues to do with heat units, where we find that after the 22nd of December, we tend to have a, a decline in heat units as we progress towards the winter months. So it's important for you to take note of that so that you know whether or not your crop is going to grow in the recommended time frame. The soil fertility, the fertilizer program, it was highlighted and the planting dates. On the planting dates, when we look at sugar bean, would recommend for our varieties, given the days to maturity that I have just highlighted, we recommend that you plant from January until February, from mid-January, especially because usually you find that um, the December, December month uh, in a good season is usually quite wet. So now the sugar bean crop is quite sensitive to moisture at uh, establishment. So you'd want to come in when the water, is the, the, the moisture is there in the ground, but it's not too much. As uh, the crop also undergoes a PGL germination, you would not want it to rot uh, in the ground before it emerges because this will affect your crop stand. And the plant density as well, you need to take note of that, where it speaks to your spacing and it speaks to your, to your desired plant population. Um, I would just highlight that uh, the plant population that is desired for sugar bean is between 220,000 to 330,000 plants per hectare. So to achieve this, you need to establish at a spacing of uh, an interval spacing of 45 to 50 centimeters. But you can still use the implements that you have at hand, where if you have a planter that is calibrated at 90 uh, interval spacing, you can go planting uh, in those 90 rows and come back planting in the center of the road to achieve the 45 centimeters. Then the in row spacing is recommended. Uh, it is recommended that you do an in row spacing of uh, between five to 10 centimeters. This will give you the desired plant population because yield is a function of two things, yield per plant and yield per unit area. So you also need to take note of the occurrence of diseases. We highlighted this rotation plan and management, most of all is important because this is what is going to cause the variation 
between a farmer having the same conditions, the same variety, but achieving a ton, another farmer achieving less than a ton, and one farmer achieving three tons per hectare. So these are the, the, the factors that you need to consider in variety selection of the sugar bean crop and any crop in particular. So now we just need to reinforce the fact that agronomic practices are important because they are going to help you in unlocking the genetic potential of the crop that we, you will have established. So today, a lot has been said about the soil type, the fertility, the weeds, the insects, the diseases, the variety choice, the weather, the herbicides. It all falls under agronomic practices. And yes, of course, the management program, which speaks to you as a farmer, your ability to commit yourself and be hands-on, scout regularly for insect pests so that you get optimum yields in the cropping venture that you are in because farming is indeed a business which can be look, quite lucrative or dismal depending on how you manage it. So on that note, I would just like to conclude by saying um, the words, uh, quoting the words that were said by Crop Life. They said that once in your life, you need a doctor. Like now, I would uh, test the fact that uh, we are frequenting the doctor because of uh, the COVID scare that is there and is real. You need a lawyer, you need a policeman, a preacher, but every day, three times a day, or even more than three times, depending on your, on your, your eating habits, you need a farmer. So there is no time when a farmer is not going to be important. And hinging on this, I'll quote uh, in conclusion the words of uh, the African Development Bank president, two-time president, Akinumi Adesina, who said the next generation of billionaires in Africa will be farmers. So farmers, we are an important crop. We are an important um, uh, people. We need to know that essential as we are, yes, we take note of the COVID regulations, but farming is indeed a formidable business. Thank you. Many thanks there for, for a great presentation, uh, Wendy. And um, uh, indeed, it is true. Uh, we need farmers daily. And uh, the next presentation uh, is coming from uh, Junior Manduna from Agricultural Marketing Authority. It's on the market of sugar beans. Thank you very much, Stan. Again, my name is Junia Manduna from Agricultural Marketing Authority. I'm currently the interim head agribusiness department. I'll present on marketing of sugar beans in Zimbabwe. Um, most things have been said, so I'll just um, run through quickly my presentation. Can you please allow me to share my screen? Yes, please, uh, Keron. Right. Um, okay. Uh, sugar beans, also known as the common bean, is well known for its high protein nutritional value and is a good substitute for meat. It's a common relish in our Zimbabwean diet. I'm sure each and every household uh, at one point or many times we do consume sugar beans. This uh, grain is easily stored, which makes it easy or useful as a crop for substitute use. When the, price uh, the lucrative crop, as earlier on indicated, uh, has potential to enhance household incomes for the farmers. It has potential to create uh, employment as well as um, export earnings. Uh, in case someone doesn't know what uh, Agricultural Marketing Authority is, I'll just give uh, a brief outline. Agricultural Marketing Authority, AMA, is a statutory body established by an act of parliament with a mandate to regulate production, marketing, and processing of all agricultural products in Zimbabwe, including the sugar bean. Uh, and what is the role of AMA in uh, sugar bean marketing? 
uh, the AMA Act empowers AMA to register all agricultural value chains, uh, value, value chain players, that is the input uh, suppliers, the producers, uh, as the farmers, the buyers, the traders and processors of um, sugar beans. And from time to time, uh, AMA is empowered to, fin to, to request for the finishing of returns and information from all the value chain players for planning purposes. Because in, in MA, we've got a role, an advisory role to the ministry. Therefore, it's important that um, as farmers, we register, we also submit our returns when we are required to do so. As a MA, we also coordinate contract farming for strategic crops, which includes sugar beans. We are also there to provide market intelligence for commodities on both the local and international market. And we also create market linkages for commodities such as sugar beans. I'll give you an example. Earlier on this, um, last year, we managed to link the farmers uh, who, who are doing sugar beans in uh, Chibu irrigation scheme, as well as the Chakoa areas, uh, they were able, we facilitated the, for them to get markets for their sugar beans. We are also responsible for coming up with regulations or standards of quality, classification, grading, and packaging for agricultural products, including the sugar beans. Then um, I'll move on to the marketing trends for sugar beans. Uh, the market value players for sugar beans include the producers who are about the uh, commercial and smallholder farmers. We've got your traders, the importers and exporters. We've got the processors. We've got the distributors, the wholesalers and the retailers, uh, as well as the consumers who are mainly the NGOs, uh, learning institutions such as boarding schools, colleges, hospitals, as well as prisons. Uh, sugar beans is not a government controlled commodity. And because of that, the prices of sugar beans are determined by market forces. Uh, the major buyers of uh, sugar beans currently are GMB, and you've got your National Foods, uh, Metro Peach uh, and Brown wholesalers. We've got Pro Brands, Choppies, and other supermarkets. Currently, the varieties on the market, uh, the Speckled Ice, the Bonus, Cardinal, Bounty, Gloria, and the Nua 45, the, 45, the Fortified Bean. Um, normally, if someone pro, uh, establishes their crop, probably now, in January, in January, February, they are likely to, to then market their, uh, their sugar bean around uh, 30, maybe from June, July through to August. Uh, the sugar bean is uh, accepted on the market when they reach a maximum moisture content of uh, between 9 and 11 percent. And uh, according to the SI 140 of 2013, there are two grades of sugar bean. And I would like to encourage farmers that it is important for them to, when they harvest their, their sugar beans, at least they should grade their, their sugar beans because uh, at the market, the price of uh, sugar beans it depends on the grade. So it is very important for farmers. We encourage farmers that they do grading of their, of their sugar beans. Uh, the graph uh, shown here gives an average um, producer price for sugar beans over the, uh, since 2016. It shows that it has ranged between uh, probably 700 US dollars up to even $1,400, depending on the demand and supply forces. 
Then the next uh, graph is showing the market uh, price trends the price you get when you probably go to Mbare Mosika or Blawayo market. So the prices were ranging between a dollar and dollar 22 uh, at Mbare Mosika, a dollar US per kg to dollar 22. Then in Blawayo, it was costing uh, between so, Sorry to interrupt. Um, are you able to share your screen? Oh, I thought I was sharing. Uh, seems you are not seeing. Uh, Sorry about that. It's, it's all right. Sorry about that. Can you see it now? Uh, no, not as yet. Yes. Uh, yes, now we can see. Oh, sorry about, about that. Uh, okay. I was showing you the on the screen. Uh, I'm showing uh, the the producer prices for sugar, which is, for sugar bean, which has been obtaining in the market since 2015. So the prices were ranging between um, uh, 700 in 2017. Then it, um, you see that from 2015, it was around 1.3. So like uh, as already alluded by the pre previous presenters, it's only, it's just showing that this is a very lucrative, this is a very lucrative crop to grow. Then the next one is showing the prices obtained in our mass agricultural market, KKG where you find that at Mbare Mosika, the price for sugar bean uh, was in, in a range of between dollar and dollar, dollar 75 cents per kg. And in Vlawayo, it was between dollar seven cents and uh, as high as $2.40, $2.40 cents per kg. Then uh, I'll move on to the challenges that are being experienced by farmers growing uh, the sugar beans when they then market their crop. Number one, there's the issue of high transport costs. So as a solution, a proposed solution, we are encouraging farmers to get organized, um, form clusters uh, and have uh, aggregation centers where they, they bulk their produce, then they'll be able to, to transport their sugar beans. This can, can only happen or will be facilitated by AMA working together with the farmers to get the farmers organized. Then there's also the issue of poor price bargaining power on the part of the farmers. It is important that uh, we increase access to market information as well as uh, build the capacity of um, farmers in terms of post harvest management and negotiation skill. Then there's also the issue of uh, poor road networks and accessibility. There is great need to look into the issue of rehabilitating the roads. This can be done by the government. Then there's also the issue of limited market access. As a MA, we are promoting contract farming so that at least there is a ready market for the sugar bean, for the sugar bean, as well as uh, we could work with uh, Zim Trade to build capacity of um, export market for the farmers. Um, one last thing, uh, in, in line of um, the COVID, I would want to inform the farmers and um, the traders and the processors that also as the AMA, we are helping farmers by giving them exemption letters so that they are able to go about and do their business. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Junior. 
Manduna for that great uh, presentation. The next presentation was supposed to be uh, Keith from Keynes. Uh, Keith, are you on the call? Seems uh, you didn't manage, but anyways, some of the issues that he was going to uh, discuss on were covered by the Agricultural Marketing uh, Authority in terms of uh, the quality uh, issues. So now we go into our question uh, and answer session. Into our question and answer uh, session. So the first question that we have in our chat group is from Shipoka Shangura. She's saying, at what stage do you start applying foliar? I think uh, it's foliar fertilizer. Maybe uh, ZFC, can you answer that one? Sorry, what was the question? She's asking, uh, at what stage should we start applying foliar? I think it's foliar fertilizer. Well, the foliar 15, all right. Thank you for that one. Uh, you, can, you can start applying the foliar 15 at, uh, say, your week three after the crop is emerged, uh, simply because this is the time or the stage when the crop would have developed the sufficient canopy or spread out the leaves in order to intercept or take up uh, the nutrients as you spray them, you either using a boom sprayer or your knapsack sprayer. So that's your three weeks after crop emergence. Uh, okay, no, that's Thank great. I uh, hope you are answered there, uh, Chipo. Thank you very much. Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay, then the next one uh, is from Joe Foroma. Okay, it's, uh, his question is, are the presentation going to be shared? Yes, we are we're recording the webinar and it will be posted on our YouTube channel. We'll also send a link uh, so that you can subscribe to, to the channel. Then the third Thank one you. is now. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Then how much is uh, a shela? That's from Farai Muronzi. I think I asked Zimbabwe, you can uh, answer that one. Right. Um, we have three types of shellers. Uh, the 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 one with the lowest price is uh, ranging at 4.8 US, and uh, the most expensive one is going for 26,000 US. Uh, okay, uh, that's great. Uh, then the following question. I hope Farai Muronzi have been answered there. Then. The other question is from Siri. She's saying, okay. the other participants. Okay, great. So the other question is on apron star. Uh, it's from Chipopiri. She's saying, when is uh, apron star? Okay, she's actually asking about the application. How is apron star applied? I think it's for ZFC. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, you apply apron star at planting. What you do is that you make a, a paste out of it. Apron star is a powder. So you make a paste or a slurry uh, out of it. That means you mix it with a few mils of water so that it then becomes uh, a slurry. Then you cut all the seed, you, you pour it onto the seed, you egg the mix using your hands or using a shovel. You get an even distribution. The good thing is that it is red in color. And then once you see that all your seed is covered well, you can then come in and plant. Some farmers also ask, how can I mix together the apron star and your rhizobium? You first apply your, you, you first uh, coat your seed with the apron star and then later on mix with your rhizobium. So you have two layers, your apron star first and then your rhizobium, then you come in and plant. Okay, uh, great. Thank you for, for answering that one. Then the fifth question is, I think it's for Wendy Mazura. It's, uh, can, can I plant beans now? Is this the right uh, time to plant beans? An important question indeed. For beans, we find that uh, we have, uh, for most of the country, the, for the high-fold, 
we have two planting windows. We have uh, the January to February planting window, which means now is the ideal time for you to plant. What you should watch out for is the incidence of uh, high extensive rainfall because germination will be poor if you're going to plant during periods of uh, uh, very high moisture in the soil, uh, sugar bean is sensitive. Then the other planting window will be soon after winter uh, from August to September. Uh, around that time, it's another planting window. But for those in the low veld and areas that are not prone to frost, they can plant over the winter period and it's the most profitable crop because it won't be um, much on the market. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thank you for shedding more light on that one. Then uh, the other one is for Junior Manduna, is how do we register with AMA, with the Agricultural Marketing Authority? What is the process like? Who do we contact? Are there any fees? Okay. Oh, yes. Um, when you want to register with the Agricultural Marketing Authority as a farmer, number one, we need uh, a copy of your ID or company documents for farms uh, who need uh, that registration. We also need proof of access to land in terms of maybe the lease agreement, uh, joint venture agreement, or even the offer letter, as well as the registration fee per annum of one US dollar or equivalent at ruling interbank rate. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's great, thank you. So the next one is can uh, green beans can beans be rotated with a tomato plant? I don't know who can answer that one. Is it um, Wendy? Yes, uh, yes, definitely. When you are choosing rotation crops, you need to check for the, uh, the the family in which the crop belongs. Usually you can safely rotate crops from different families without a problem. It's, so for sugar bean being a legume, you can rotate it with uh, tomatoes, which is in the Solanaceous family. Okay, uh, that's great. I think these are all the questions that we we had uh, in the in the chat. Um, let me just uh, go through. Yes, I think that's all. So we thank you very much, uh, the presenters. I think the next stage now is to share your contact details, either yours or for the organization that you represent, whichever uh, way that you are comfortable with. So maybe uh, we start with um, the first uh, presenter, uh, Ms. Chikovu. Are you able to share your, your details? Or Mr. Kobushi is um okay, yes, uh okay, fine. She had indicated that she should drop earlier. Then um I asked to Zimbabwe, are you able to share your contact details so that anyone right. um, has, uh, equipment or, or any advice on, on uh mechanization can get in touch? All right. My cell phone number is 0773. Seven six one two zero two. I'll repeat that zero seven seven three seven six one two zero two. My email address is Bradley M, which is B R A D L E Y M at Hast dot C O dot Z W. And uh, you can also call us on our landline which is 0242152313 up to 7. 0242152313 up to 7. I'll also type um, uh, all these contact details in a chat. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, that would be great. Then uh, next is uh, ZFC. All right, uh, my direct line is 0774-001-323, 0774-001-323. My email address is munutud, munutud at zfc.co.za. 
dot ZW and uh, the command line is a 086-3775-3882. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's great. Uh, thank you. Then uh, we have uh, Wendy, your contact details or the organizer or CIDCO. Thank you. Um, I'll start off with my contact details, 0773-270-080. Then the telecell line is 0732-270-080. My email address is wendy.madzura at sidcogroup.com. You can also call on our landline, which is uh, 86 770 255 or you can go to our website www.sidcogroup.com for more information uh, great uh, thank you then agricultural marketing authority okay um my contact number is 0773 and my email address is jmanduna at ama.co.zw or you can call on our landline numbers which are Harare code 30 then the number is 308662 up to 4 or you can go on our website which is www.ama.co.zw thank you uh, great, uh, thank you. So we have posted uh, our YouTube channel link to okay in the chat group so that you can also uh, subscribe to receive the recording of uh, this webinar. Thank you very much, farmers, for for joining this webinar. And many thanks to the presenters with uh, great presentations, very informative. Uh, we, we really appreciate. So Agribusiness TV is conducting weekly webinars free for farmers. So uh, please do join us next week for another webinar as we cover another uh, farm business uh, topic. Thank you very much. Please uh, have a great day and please stay safe. COVID-19 is real. Mask up. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.